So what was our third topic? Sonic. Sonic Forces. Oh boy. So we learned some cool things about Sonic Forces. Got some new footage. Got insight into something Sonic has never done before. They are letting us make our own characters. Say what? Now, oh my God, video games making your own characters. How original. This is akin. It is, this actually. Is, this is akin to Mario letting you make your own character. Uh-huh. Akin to Zelda being like, hey, here's a character creator. Go to town. Yep. Uh, this is not something that you would ever expect out of Sonic. Right. Now, Sonic has always had a history of adding new characters, shoehorned in, yada, yada, that don't work over the years and don't stick with the franchise. But this is different because Mm -hmm. this is a Mm character-created character that they've already gotten into the game no matter how you create it and how how it's going to work. And they show gameplay of one of the the type of characters that looked really, really good. It looked more like a classic Sonic level setup, the 2D side-scrolling, but with its own twist, like with the whip and just different ways to traverse the world. Like, it, it looked really fun. This looked like, you know, with Sonic Boom when they tried to, like, make other characters come in and do all these things. Like, this looks like what Sonic Boom probably should have been. <laughs> um, not a beat yeah, up yeah, right. platforming, weird yeah. thing that it was. Uh, but they really nailed it, I think, with mm-hmm. this character creator. And mm-hmm. I know that there's some people that think, oh, great, now all these people that are making their own Sonic characters on DeviantArt uh, are going to get their say, and it's all ridiculous, and all the, all the fan fiction that's going to come out of this. Like, so what? what? Exactly. It's not like Sonic Game. Okay. It's not like Sonic Games have been like this big, massive, you know, 10 plus million seller every time it's come out over the past 20 years. Yeah, right. But let's be honest about the Sonic franchise. If it didn't team with Mario for Sonic and Mario at the Olympics, I don't know that Sonic would even still be around. Right. Nintendo is kind of saving Sonic. Yeah. Now, obviously. Sonic Forces is coming out on all the platforms, all the major platforms, so it's not like an exclusive, but still, it's one of those things where, let's just be honest, Sonic hasn't had a lot of relevance outside of Nintendo. Like, Nintendo got Sonic Lost World, and that was a decent Sonic game. Parts of it were great. Parts of it were not so great. But the point is, is that if it wasn't for that game, the lasting memory that we'd have of Sonic right now is Sonic Boom, Mm -hmm. and that wasn't good. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we... You need to understand that Sonic is not a highly successful franchise right now. It's got it's a long standing franchise. It, it to me it's almost. I hate saying this. Nintendo fans are really going to kill me. It's like Metroid. Uh huh. Metroid has never had a game sell more than like four point five million copies, mm-hmm. and the average game sales per Metroid game release is like one point five billion. It's not that much. There's indie games that are series that sell consistently higher than Metroid does. Uh, just to put that in perspective, that right. doesn't mean that Metroid is not fantastic. Right, right. It's a very niche game. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that side scrolling or 3D platformers, that's not really a niche genre. That's a highly popular genre. And the fact oh, that Sonic sure. hasn't been able to sell very well and it tells mm-hmm. you they haven't been making very good games. Well, that's also because they've strayed from the side scrolling 2D. And, and yes, there are other good games again, but on the single platform, it's like, like Sonic Generations. It's awesome on 3DS. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, what was that one that was just. Absolutely beyond terrible, wasn't it? Like Sonic two thousand, Sonic was six, yeah, Sonic, Sonic 06. six. That was what that started the massive downturn. Yeah, another Sonic Adventures. And, yeah, uh, I know they, Sonic they, six was just absolutely. They, they, there's been a lot of terrible. there's been a lot of bad Sonic games, and, I, and there are some people that like them. Like some people just like bad games. It's okay. Right. Yeah, like no, that's, that's fine. I like but... I like bad movies. Apparently, no, like yeah. that's it's, it's okay. <laughs> like whatever people like what they like, they exist for a reason. Because there are people that like it, but. Sonic isn't this franchise that I feel like is so holy that you can't do this to. Mm-hmm. Because it needs yeah. a kick in the butt. Oh, it, yeah, it needs to reinvent itself, I think. And it's funny, because in reinventing itself, it's just doing what it's always done so far, from what we've seen. Right. 2D side-scrolling. Right. But doing it right. Right, exactly. Like, like people want it to be. Uh, now, that doesn't mean there won't be 3D-like levels. We don't know We don't know everything about Sonic Forces yet. We'll find out a ton of E3. But just the character creator stuff, it looks really, really interesting, really fun a way to reinvigorate the series. And the fact that it's not like it's this instead of Sonic. You still have New Age Sonic and Classic Sonic mixed into the mix, and you'll be playing as those two as well in their own stages. Yeah. So you're still getting Sonic. It's still very much a Sonic game, but it's just they're introducing this extra element to it that I think is really going to appeal to people. Mm -hmm. And I am stoked. Mm -hmm. I think it looks good. I mean, the Sonic Forces look good to you? Ah. 
I was never a gigantic Sonic fan, mm-hmm. but it does look it does look like it's fun. I don't know if I actually will purchase it or not, but it'll be something that I would definitely play. I mean, to try it out. Well, I I, I like it like this: you have the side-scrolling Mario games versus a game like Super Mario sixty four or Super Mario Odyssey. You're more likely you like you like those three D platformers. You mm-hmm. like the Super Mario Odyssey, the Super Mario sixty four. Oh, yeah. You're a hell of a lot Super more likely Mario to pick 64 up. Mario sixty four was probably one of my favorite games. Yeah. Like you're more likely to pick up that than you are say New Super Mario Brothers, a side scrolling Mario game. That's yeah, it's right. just classic Mario. Right. Oh, it's, I mean, the cl- don't get me wrong, the classic. Mario Oh, it's good. Like you, I, I know, I know. Yeah. You played yeah. a lot oh, of the yeah. classics, yeah. but but like, I just think of today. Right. No, I. You have Super Mario Odyssey, or you have like a New Super Mario Brothers for Switch. Right. Which one yeah. are you? Are you? Yeah, buying? I'm gonna go with probably. The, I'm gonna easily go with Odyssey. Yeah, and you yeah. probably and, and you know the, that's the thing. You didn't say, oh, I'm gonna get both. No, because you're, you're, you're not. Right. I mean, I, it's not that I wouldn't. No, no. Well, yeah, I mean, right. somebody, like, I got it for you for a present. You'll right. play oh, it. Yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll yeah. Play, but it's not something you're like. I'm gonna go buy it. Yeah, it's not something I need to go buy. And, and I think My, that's the Odyssey, way you're gonna be. Odyssey is something that seems like it's something I need to go buy. Yes. Because it's gonna be. You know, it has that feel of the sun, su- sunshine and 64 kind of... It's got the feel of classic 3D open-world platformers. Right. Which, there aren't really a lot of those anymore. And it's really weird when the genre vanished, because it kind of vanished a little bit around the, play- the N6... Uh, kind of the GameCube, PlayStation 2 era. It kind of started fading away, and I never really understood why, because they were some of the most popular oh, for sure. games during the prior generation. So it was really weird. Some of it was that, obviously, the people that make them, like Nintendo, Sunshine didn't do as well, so they kind of took mm-hmm. a break. And then you had, uh, what was it, uh, Rare got bought by Microsoft, and then they just, for some reason, made a really crappy Banjo-Kazooie game and kind of killed one. off any oh, possibility of God. them continuing. Oh, why <laughs> did you even bring that up? Ah. <laughs> uh! But, but see, Sonic has had a lot of crappy 3D attempts at 3D yeah. platforming stuff, and it's still alive. And that's, yeah. why, that's why I said it's like Metroid, where Metroid has had high-quality games. I know some people argue if Other M is good or not. I think it's fantastic, but whatever. It has had consistently pretty high-quality games, but it's in a niche genre that can't get more popular than it really is, versus Sonic that can have a Mario-like effect. Mm-hmm. It can mm-hmm. get up to 8, 10, 15 million if it's really dang good. Uh, and they just haven't been there. It's almost like Mega Man. Like Mega Man 9, they released that as a digital download way back in the day. Uh, not even way back. Maybe, was it five years, eight years ago? I don't remember. It, it, it was a little bit ago, but it was like last generation. And it was them returning. To, it was literally a classic Mega Man new levels. New, new oh, thing. yeah, yeah. And that sold extremely well. Oh, yeah. Because people liked Mega Man. Yeah. They didn't just didn't like what they did with it after Mega Man X. <laughs> right. Mega Man X was fantastic. Oh, yeah. A couple games you know, that were based on Mega Man X were fine. Then they started straying from the formula, trying to make it a 3D thing, and it just yep. didn't work. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened with Sonic, I feel, is Lost World was great. But in general, 3D Sonic games haven't necessarily worked that well. Uh-huh. And I think that's why I'm so excited about Sonic Forces is because it's them going back to what made the series great in the first place, recognizing uh-huh. what made the series great. And if they do explore some 3D stuff, maybe they'll take some lessons from games that have done it. Like when people are like, oh, well, so, well Sonic, Sonic Generations or Sonic Colors or whatever was good. And it's like, but why was it good? It was a 2D side-scrolling Sonic game. <laughs> yep. I mean... Why was Mega Man 9 great? Because it was classic Mega Man side scrolling awesomeness. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's. I think Sonic Forces has a chance to blow up. I, I definitely don't think it's a game that you'd be into as much. Like, I, I think if Sonic 06 would have been awesome, yeah. you might have started buying more into Sonic because yeah. you would have been like, okay, oh, 3D platforming. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. Gotta go fast in 3D platforming? Like, right. sweet. Yeah. Uh, but Chili Dogs, <laughs> the old cartoon series, were probably yeah, two yeah, more, right, than, yeah. more than right. the actual games. But I, I think Sonic Forces is a game that is setting itself up very nicely to hit with old school Sonic fans, mm-hmm. um, and I'm I'm hoping that, and I think this is always the great hope for all Sonic games, is that it lives up to the expectations it's setting for itself now, because this feels like this is almost a franchise revival game, mm-hmm. um, and it feels feels weird saying that because they've been Sonic games, but we all know it hasn't been doing well, hasn't been healthy, uh, when. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games are outselling Sonic games. It's a problem. Because Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games isn't exactly like huge sellers. They sell enough to exist, but 
It's not, we're not mm-hmm. talking about Mario Kart numbers here, you know. Mm-hmm. Where right. Mario Kart sells so well, you can, you know, it does outsell several Mario games sometimes. But, man, I have high hopes. Um, and maybe it's just because I, I, I'm still really into the 2D side. There's a ton of 2D side scrollers. Yeah. Um, but, and part of it is because of Nintendo when they brought new Super Mario Brothers, new Super Mario Brothers with U, blah, 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 brought all those games out. They were so good. And Mario Maker is fantastic. So mm-hmm. it's like, I'm really into the side-scrolling thing right now, I think. It's just kind of the way it is. And because I liked Sonic when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't own a Genesis till a little later, but I, I played the, the first couple Sonic games. Loved them. I, I played everything up until Sonic 06, and then that, <laughs> that kind of turned me off. And, yeah. and I, I've played Sonic games since, but it's just, I've always felt like Sonic is missing something. And this almost feels like it has that something. Now, here's the catch. It's like... When they say there's a Zelda cycle with fans about how, oh, they love a game when it first comes out, then they slowly start hating it, start hating it, start hating it, and start, start talking about how the prior game that they were hating on is now better and amazing compared to the newer game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it runs and repeats when a new game gets announced, and yada, 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 yada. Well, it's almost like there's a Sonic cycle as well, where yeah. this Sonic cycle isn't actually a fan base. It's actually, well, it's a little bit of fan base, but it's, it's based on Sega. They first show the game, they tease it, they tease it, tease it, looks good, looks good. Everyone starts buying the hype a little bit. They're like, oh, man, this is the good Sonic game. Mm-hmm. And then it comes out, and it's like, oh, shit. Yep, <laughs> thank you. Like, that's what happened with Sonic Boom. Yeah. Because Sonic Boom was made, was pubbed that it was being made by people at Big Red Button who are former Naughty Dog developers. What does Naughty Dog make? Some of those popular games in the world. The Last of Us, Uncharted. Mm-hmm. You know, like, they make massive, huge Sony games that have this huge appeal, and you just see, like, dude, yes, it's a very different type of game from what they're making, but we're talking about people that know what they're doing, right? Yeah. And it turns out they didn't know what they were doing. Um, so that's always the thing. Like, we're going to get hyped and excited. I just hope it doesn't have that left out. Because I think if it does, especially if this game is more focused on side-scrolling than the 3D 3D platforming aspect... I worry. A, I, I don't think it's gonna be it. I don't think there's ever it for Sonic. Yeah, but it's gonna be close to fork time for Sonic. It's gonna be like Metroid. It's gonna be like mm, we're putting it on a shelf for a while. Yeah, because Metroid again, we haven't had a new game since other M was that back in 2011. Maybe was, maybe it was 2010. I can't remember. Uh, I don't know when we're getting a new Metroid game. I mean, yes, we had Metroid Federation Forces, but do Metroid fans really want me talking about that game? <laughs> that wasn't exactly a good. Re- I think it's it's a good game. It really is, but like. I think if there had been a Metro game announced, it would have been received a lot better. But uh, I I do want to also twist this into something that I, I did not put on the topic sheet, but it just came to my head because we were talking about Sega. Mm-hmm. Sega put up a, 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 a race to, or plans to 2020 or, or race to 2020 or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, some sort of plan that clearly is everything's building up to 2020. And the idea is that they are trying to refocus the company on their core IPs and bring back a lot of dead franchises that they have in their core library nice. that they haven't seen, that have just haven't been over. Eight. They literally say, like, our plan is to revive these games and revive them across the spectrum, whether it's on mobile, whether it's on, you know, PC or consoles, whatever. Whatever way they best feel. Like, there'll be some franchises in the past that really might not make sense as a full AAA game today, and there'll be some franchises, like, say, the Knights franchise, that makes sense bringing you back as, as, a, as another 3D platformer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what's interesting here is they also released three videos that show, uh, I don't want to say a rebranding, but almost like trying to create a new image for Sega. So one of them is showing... Like I guess probably what they're going to start using in commercials a lot more in the future for future games. It's it, it's an eyeball um, animation like of a person's face with Sega in the eye, kind of like as as like a reflection thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks actually looks really sick. Yeah. And it's like okay, so so in that they're kind of turning like okay, Sega's back to like like this is a very like, we're a badass kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, not the not the who you put your touch Sega. Yeah. Like, the no. thing is, like, it, it's cute for kids. It is, it, it is. is cute for kids. Um, but it, it's kind of like one of those, like, ah, if you're going to do that, bring, bring back the bring classic. Back, yeah. I know, I say that, nostalgia. I know, yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah, Newer yeah. generation is not going to give a crap about the old Sega. Yeah. I'm not going to care. But, but um, <laughs> yeah, again, I, 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 folks, I'm well aware it's just a bygone era. 
and new people, new generation people don't give a crap. They're going to be like, that was crappy sound quality and who cares. But yeah, they may be right. They, they, they probably it, are right. It, 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 I know it's a total nostalgia thing. It is. Uh, but anyways, they also went to a making of video where they show the making of, uh, of that of that whole thing because it's, it's a real person's face um, and how, how they made that all work. And then they go into some deep details behind the company with one of their uh, key people behind one of their long lost IPs um, and just kind of it just looks all ominous and all uh, foreboding of a fantastic epic comeback for something. Doesn't t- doesn't tell you what it is. Um, and then another one that's more like a traditional ad that just looks like a badass ad for Sega. And I think it's interesting because Sega, out of all the companies that exist in the gaming world, I feel like Sega has probably had the hardest fall from grace. Mm-hmm. You know, we just talked about its mascot, Sonic, hasn't been relevant with a good game for twenty plus years, like right. okay, that's a, okay. Let's not say good, a, a great, like a, a, an absolutely fantastic yeah. instant yeah. classic right. game. Right, right, like yeah. Mario has had it. It had it with Super Mario Galaxy. Yep. Okay. Yep. It hasn't had it in the last generation. You know, three D World didn't really be at that instant classic, but it feels like they're going to do it again with Super Mario Odyssey. Mm-hmm. You know, Zelda just did it again with Breath of the Wild. Oh yeah. Like, like you know, Sony did it with Uncharted. Mm-hmm. You know, and. and uh, I'm trying to. Like, Microsoft did it with Master Chief for a while. We'll see what they have. They have coming now because the, the last few Halo games haven't really hit, like mm-hmm. hit as hard. So right. you know, but again, Microsoft has probably got something up their sleeve for Scorpio that might just say, so "Bam!" Scalebound sounded like it might be it. Yeah, but uh, they got canned, and now there's rumors out there it actually might be coming back under a different studio. <laughs> and Microsoft re up the licensing for it, so we'll see. It. Why would you re up the licensing for an IP that doesn't exist anymore if you're not doing something with it? Uh, Apparently, apparently, the reason it got canned is there was issues with development at Platinum, and it feels weird because Platinum Games in Japan's really damn good development. They're the ones that made Bayonetta, Bayonetta two, yeah. like, like with the wonderful one on one. They make fantastic games, but apparently there was issues with it. So whatever, Microsoft had to pull the plug, or maybe they didn't pull the plug. Maybe they just moved it to a different studio. Right. We'll see. But, but the point I'm making is that of all the big companies out there, there's always that thing that just hits, and with Sega. They haven't had a lot of megaton hits since they got out of the console race. Now they they did have games that sold well. You know, I, I think one of their major IPs right now is the PC the PC exclusive Total War franchise, and that's made by I think I think it might be made by Creative Assembly, um, which is a subsidiary of Sega. So it's not even Sega's main studios doing it per se. It's just the studio they own. It's kind of like Nintendo with Retro Studios. Yeah, Retro Studios made Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, fantastic game. But there's some people that, to this day, won't credit Nintendo 100% for it, and they call it a second-party game, even though it's technically a first-party because it's a Nintendo studio. Right. But Nintendo right. bought the studio. They didn't found the studio. Right. Um, so that that's kind of where people get into that whole first-party versus second-party. First-party is where the console maker founded the, the studio that made it versus bought the studio that made it. Uh, anyways, so... I'm really interested in this Sega thing because, one, they, they obviously have a huge stable of IP. They used to be a console company. They, mm-hmm. they have a ton yeah. of, of exclusive IP that they just haven't used in forever um, for a lot of various reasons, lots of money. They, you know, they focused on the games that were selling when they went, went to become a game company, a game-making company only. Uh, I'm excited a little bit. Now, I was not a Sega kid growing up. I was on that playground arguing that Nintendo over Sega, Nintendo over oh, Sega. Oh, yeah. Um, and again, I know I put up a video on console wars didn't matter, but I'd, I was a kid once. I bought into that stuff, and only oh, yeah, as an adult yeah. now I realize sure. how stupid that was. Um, but so I was a Nintendo kid. Obviously, I run Nintendo Prime. If I was a Sega <laughs> kid, I'd probably run Sega Prime or something. Yeah. Um, or I would have kept to- to- uh, Shogun Total Gaming alive because I loved yeah. I loved yeah. the Total War series. But and at the time, it wasn't even called the Total War series. There was only Shogun. Yeah. <laughs> so Shogun Total War. Right. So it was like Shogun Total Gaming. Yep. I don't know why I'm using a Japanese Shogun thing. I could just call it Total Gaming. Nope. Maybe, yep. uh, maybe Total. Nope. I think I actually was going to call it Total Gaming, but uh, someone, I think that, that domain name was taken. Taken, or something. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, moving on to stuff that matters. <laughs> <laughs> stuff that's actually Are you, semi-relevant. I, I just sat here explaining all this stuff about Sega and, and kind of what they're trying to do and their road to 2020. Um, are you excited? And I know you didn't know, you weren't a Sega guy. I played more Sega games than you. Right, I didn't know but, Sega. Um, um, I did play some. Uh, I I'm excited to see what they have uh, coming forward. Just to you know what they have in their back pocket, 
what they're going to go, hey, remember this? Hey, remember this? And now have especially games. if it's good. Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. And the thing is, Sega does have some good games. I mentioned Total War. I think they mentioned in this Road to 2020 that right now their company has been kind of focused around five IPs. And these five IPs have generally been really high quality games that they've been focused on. It was Total War. I think the. I don't know. I'm going to get this wrong. So I'm not going to say it. I was about to say a game that I think is Sega, but I'm not sure. See, here's the thing. That's how far Sega's kind of fell out where, like, even the games that are Sega, so, like, if I say, hey, Eric, what's what's popular Sega franchise today? You'd be like, yeah. well, Sonic, yeah. Total War, yeah. and what? Yeah. Um, and it's like, okay, well, they have a few others, but mm-hmm. you just don't know them, because, especially if you've been a Nintendo person, because they haven't been on Nintendo platforms very much. Mm-hmm. So... As we push forward, I'm excited because this is a company that has obviously made enough money in the past you know, decade, two decades, where they can now say, look, we're looking to expand. We're, we're in an industry now where everything's shrinking. Just AAA studios are closing. People aren't getting paychecks at places like Crytek, and it's causing issues, and people you know, not knowing what to do with their families. And... Here's a company in Japan, in Sega, this, that originally downsized and had to go down to just software only and then down to just a, a handful of select IPs that are selling well for them to being like, hey, look, we think we could be a massive player, the likes of Ubisoft, the likes of EA, the likes of even Nintendo or even Sony's output, where they're like, we think we can make a comeback with our hardcore stable of IP and become this behemoth in the industry again. Mm-hmm. Um, and not just this company that makes, yeah, we have a handful of good games, but you know they come out every few years, but whatever. you know. Right. Um, and they're not forgetting those, the, the, those titles. They're still making Total War. You know, Total, the Total War Warhammer that came out like a couple years ago, fantastic. It might be the best Total War game that's ever released. Really? Even if you don't like Warhammer, that's how good it is. That Warhammer and the Total War IP mixed so well together mm-hmm. in how that game functions. Hmm. Um, I even think there's, a, there's now going to be a Total Warhammer 2 uh, coming out. The thing is, I've never been big in the Warhammer. I, I did play their Warhammer online game for a little while, the MMO. Um, it was good, but uh, it didn't grip me like World of Warcraft did. Right. Still, I am really, really excited about what's happening with Sega. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and maybe it's because I played a little more like one game I'll always remember on the Genesis I don't even know if this is a Sega game but I don't remember playing it on any other platform Rampart oh yeah love that game you guys want to talk about tower defense games this was a tower defense game basically <laughs> okay you had your little castle you built it with like pieces that looked like out of straight out of Tetris <laughs> um, and you had oncoming ships coming to blow up your castle and I think it was ca- taking out the fort. I think they were trying to get to the fort, shoot at the fort. And throughout the game, you get moments where you finally took out all the ships and you get a moment to rebuild, but your rebuild was based on how successful you were. So, like, how many ships did you take out? How many shots did you take out? So, how many cannons you get? What pieces right. you get to build? Right. And you don't ever know necessarily what your next piece is going to be. So, if you get a piece that looks really funky, how am I going to place that? Because you need to enclose the area in order to build cannons in there. Um, a really, really fun game. I loved it. And it got stolen. I think I know who took it, but that's yeah. another story for another yeah, time. Yeah. It's another story you guys will probably never hear about. <laughs> um, but if they own like the rights to that, I would love to see like a series like that come back. Um, I'm I'm just excited by the prospect of, of Sega being like, look, we want to be a major player again. We think we have the financial backing to do it. We already have some successful IP. Here's an example. Right. Uh, and I think if Sonic, because that's always been like their centerpiece, right? right? right Sonic yep. was the centerpiece of Sega's glory days. Even on the Game Gear, Sonic was the best game on Game Gear. Oh, so, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, yeah. It was good. Let's yeah. just put it that way. Yeah, that yeah. Was, Sonic was still great then. Right. Um. So I think that is actually the one Sonic game that I actually owned. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic game. So, it's one of those things where I think if this Sonic Forces game hits huge this year, that's their first step. Mm-hmm. of pillaring into bringing back their past in new ways. Um, so I, I, hope it, I hope it goes well for them. I do too. I, I mean, I, I'm not pre-ordering Sonic Forces now. I need to play demo. I need to see more of it. I need to know right. more. But I am on board for Sega trying to become a major player again and become a major player in a way that well, hopefully you know they continue to bring all the stuff to Nintendo. Obviously, that, yeah, that's yeah, obviously my yeah, hope. Yeah, but sure. if they bring it to Xbox or whatever, oh, yeah, right. PC, I'll, I'll get it wherever if they're good. Yeah. Like, I, I just like good games. Oh, for sure. And if Sega's going to get back into the good game territory, mm-hmm. I am. Oh, oh, baby. Just imagining 
a, a time in the future where Nintendo is hitting on all cylinders, Sega is hitting on all cylinders, Sony is hitting on all cylinders, Microsoft hitting on all cylinders, uh, Steam and Valve, if they ever decide to release new games, start hitting on all cylinders, yeah. which again, that's the more far off yeah. dream is that yeah. Valve starts making games again. Yeah. Instead of just focusing on Steam and making money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Games make you money too, you know. You yeah, remember right? that, yeah, like yeah. the Steam platform. The only reason it got popular is because you forced people to get it with Half Life Two. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, just telling you, your games are why Steam mattered in the first place. So let's, yeah, let, let, let's get on that, Val. Right. Uh, right. It, it's one of those things where just imagining where all the main pillars of gaming, even EA and Ubisoft, say they all are just hitting on everything. Yeah. Imagine the world of AAA gaming we could live in. Oh, I know. That'd be just absolutely nuts. Uh, it's a world that I don't it's but, really what, even existed. What are we? Back in the 90s? Back in the 90s plus. Plus, yeah, right. Microsoft exactly. wasn't yeah. part of that. Well, right, exactly. You know, uh, I don't think Ubisoft was as big back then. Right. Like, like, and, and yes, I know there is. Some people wanted me to talk about this week, the Vivendi trying to buy out Ubisoft thing. It doesn't sound like it's happening, folks. It sounds like the price might be too high. Yeah. You can thank Ubisoft for that because Ubisoft went ahead and just made a ton of money in the past year, making their stock prices jump way high, <laughs> which made Vivendi... Mm, potentially unable to purchase a majority stake yeah. and, and, and take over. Uh, and people, the people that, that are you know up about that is Vivendi did the same thing to Activision. Um, Activision eventually made enough money to buy all the shares back, but it was mm-hmm. one of those things where when Vivendi took control, that's kind of when things started becoming annualized and people felt like quality started dropping. Yeah. Um, and they were worried about having that happen with Ubisoft. You know, where, yeah, they took a break with Assassin's Creed, but now we're going to get two Assassin's Creed games a year. We're going to get... You know, Watch Dogs every single year. We're going to start getting stop getting new IPs and just start focusing on core franchises and just getting them out really, really fast. Yeah, and then uh, which affects quality. quality yep. Yeah. So, um, and again, Ubisoft already has some issues with that, but lately they've, they've been doing a little better. Uh, the Division came out. You know, I know that it's not one of their biggest games, but it was pretty good. Uh, Watch Dogs 2 was fantastic. Uh, you know, they're bringing out Rayman Legends again, the definitive edition. That That's always going to be fun. <laughs> so, again, I, I, I just want to see an industry where everyone's hitting good because it's good for us. Oh, for sure. Variety in life and spice and different development teams being really, really good is just good for everyone. And, man, Sega, outside of a handful of IPs, hasn't been that level since the 90s. Oh, yeah. Let's bring it back, Sega. Yeah. I, I wish you luck. I hope you pull it off. Yeah. I want yeah. you. I want to want your games. Mm-hmm. Well, besides Sword of War, I always want Total War. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big sucker for Sword yeah, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to do it for this week's podcast, I think. Yeah, I think so. We got, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, at Ninty Prime. You can follow me personally on Twitter, at Nate Chance. Uh, if you have any topics you'd like us to discuss, any fan topics, you can always email those to Nathan at NintendoPrime.net. Or you can talk about it down in the comments on this video or on the on the site, you know, I read all, all of it. Like, I'm, I'm one of those crazy people. I read all of the dang YouTube comments, which, if people know that, that can give you, like, cancer, I think. I think it's a medically yeah, proven fact possibility. that you can get cancer from reading all the comments. I read all the comments on social media as well. It's almost like a full-time job just to read comments, but I, I can't help it. I, I, I like... One thing I like at Nintendo Prime is just being kind of personal with the fans. Oh, and, for sure. And, and being part... I don't want to I don't want to ever feel like we're up here and you're down here. Right. Like, no, we are with you. Yeah. We're not voices for you. We are our own voices, but we are fans along with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not always going to want the same things. We're not always going to have the same opinions, but I, I definitely don't want people thinking, like, oh, we're up here and you're not. Yeah, this is hopefully a place of good discussion. Yes. Hopefully. Yes. Well, you can maybe, maybe hit our discussion. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that being said, yeah, right, right. Uh, if you know you like this video, you like this podcast, subscribe up to our YouTube channel. Uh, and if you don't, then I don't know what you're even doing here. I guess oh. we'll, we'll never see you again, huh? No. It's <laughs> nice knowing you. It, it, thank you for watching this one. It, it, yeah. it, it's better going to folks. Ho- oh, you know, one thing I do want to mention. Yeah, what's up? I've been putting it in our video version, but I don't ever talk about it. We have a Patreon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, and obviously the Patreon's not quintessential to necessarily anything. We've obviously been making this happen without it. Uh, but... It is something that I feel is essential to have these days. Not just because YouTube ad revenue is down and, and, and ad revenue on websites is down and yada, yada, yada. And I don't make enough money. Oh. It's that projects like ours primarily exist because of fans. Mm-hmm. If we don't have an audience, there's no point in doing this. If right, we exactly. don't have 
if, if we don't have support from fans, there's no reason for us to even exist. And we, in trying to provide entertainment value, trying to provide discussion and thought-provoking things to you folks, it is something that we feel fans at times want to show appreciation for in a way that directly helps us continue to do what we do. Um, and there's things that help us continue to do what we do. Like, E3 is next month, and we'll have a pre-show, we'll have a post-show, but it's probably going to be just me. You're not going to ask off work at your other job. No. But if our Patreon was suddenly making $1,500 a month, and I'd be like, Eric, dude, you take off work, I could pay 800 bucks for the week. Mm-hmm. That's something you'd be like, okay, well, that's actually... I hate saying time's money, but it's like we hate, we need to make money. Right, right. Exactly, um, yeah. And I do do Nintendo Prime for a living right now. So, you know, well, how long I can continue to do that without having to have another job, I don't know. But it, it's one of those things where you're supporting us through Patreon, which, by the way, it's patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. Oh, yep, slash Nintendo Prime. It helps support what we do and allow us to do more. Like, people who want us to have a third, in, a third in-person guest, I guarantee you I would work extremely hard to make that happen and make the time for that person worthwhile and get all the proper equipment to have a third mic set up and a proper mixing board and better lighting and maybe we get this whole heck of a thing out of my office and into a better <laughs> place. Um, you know, there's so many things we could do if we had your support. Right now, this is just what I can afford, what I do. And the thing is, you guys never have to pay. I'm never going to say you need to pay us anything. Oh, yeah. You don't Definitely. need to buy any of the merchandise we might, might post. You don't need to... Uh, support us on Patreon at all. I'm going to continue to make content 100% for free, whether or not this is my full-time job or not. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. Uh, the, obviously, when it's no longer my full-time job, there will be less of it, but we're still going to continue it. And I just want to stress this to people that do like to support their favorite content makers, that, hey, there's a way for you to do it if you are interested in that. I'm not suggesting that we are nearly worth your money or nearly popular enough or whatever, but that's not for us to really determine at the end of the day. It, it, that's up to you guys. So, no, I'm not e-begging. I'm just saying, if you would like to support us, there is a way to do it. Right. And we appreciate, I think we have two backers right now, and we make like three bucks a month, you know, we're so, we're, we're living that rich life. Oh, yeah. Um, Making it rain. But, <laughs> but uh, I, I do, I'm very thankful to whoever those two backers are. I haven't seen them comment or anything yet, so I'm not 100% sure who they are. But uh, thank you for backing, and if more of you guys like to back, you're more than welcome to it. If you don't, oh, well. Yeah. Life, if you enjoy the life content. moves on. Enjoy the content. You know? Yeah, enjoy the content. We're gonna we're gonna be here every week, hopefully, <laughs> unless I, unless something bad happens. Hopefully, yeah. nothing bad happens. Something yeah, always right. happens. I swear. Yeah, you don't really need to <laughs> stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> right? I jinx it like me losing a Madden four Super Bowls in a row. All right. So thanks for joining us on the Nintendo Prime podcast. As always, you folks have a good one. Later.